Hello everyone and welcome back to Fat Paradox Gaming. Yes, hello everyone and welcome to the Mod Spotlight on Peripherals Plus Plus. Now this is an early development build, so it's missing some stuff like some of these textures, some of the items and blocks and stuff aren't quite working properly, but I'm excited for it and want to show you some things, including this speaker. Ah. Uh, hello everyone and welcome back block. to Fat Paradox <laughs> Gaming. So good to have the speaker back. So basically, um, Peripherals Plus Plus has come along in the void of MISC peripherals. Now, some of you may remember MISC peripherals from a few versions of Minecraft ago. It was a great mod that added some excellent blocks, which, yeah, just, uh, it stopped being developed. Richard G just ceased development. <clears throat> Peripherals Plus Plus has come along to fill that void. It's brought back a lot of the blocks that we miss and loved. And yeah, so let's get into some of them now. So here we've got the um, speaker. And let's just take a look at this program I've been using. So edit start, a little program I made to make it say hello. So we wrap our peripheral. So it's on the left of the computer. And I'm just waiting for a redstone signal from the lever to get going. And then, yeah, it's just s.speak. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to That Paradox Gaming. Basically, is the end of it. That Paradox Gaming. Neat. Um, so, yeah, I put in an extra A just so that sounds right. Now, so, yeah, the literally just, I think that's the command you use, s.speak. But there is something else we can do with that. So, if I go into Lua, and um, we just go s.speak... And so you just put in a string that you want to say, so we'll say hello. And I'm not entirely sure what this number is for, but okay. And now we can... This works. I should probably explain this. The old speaker used to work by using your computer's built-in text-to-speech. Uh, this ended up causing some issues, I think, because the block ended up having to be disabled because it was breaking the game. And yeah never ended up really getting fixed. This does not use your computer's text-to-speech. This uses Google Translate. So you're probably familiar with Google Translate. It just translates stuff for you. And it does actually have a text-to-speak function there. Well, um, this is just using um, that. And so you can actually say stuff in different languages. H-E-I-L-L-A. Amazing! So you, yeah, actually can say stuff in, yeah, -E practically whatever language you want. It's great. So anyway, look, that's the, um, yeah, that's the speaker. Good to have it back. I've missed it. I'm definitely going to do some stuff with that, so stick around on my channel to see me doing cool things with the speaker. Uh, next time we might actually go back to, we might go to the chat box. Now, this is one that's uh, been missed as well. as well. If I say hello in chat, bam, immediately get a reply. Hi, Remorseless. That's um, this computer talking in chat. So the chat box uh, lets you listen for yeah stuff in chat. It'll fire an event whenever something happens in chat. So if we just go edit start up here, and we can see we're just looking for an event, chat, and whenever we get that event, um, we just... Say, uh, C dot say, or dot say, I've wrapped the peripheral as C, and we're saying hi, and I'm also using this variable name. So when your chat event gets fired off, you can get, um, the name of the person who was chatting. I also believe you can, you can get their message as well. Uh, that would be the next parameter in the event. Um, there's another event you can listen for as well. You can also listen for when someone dies and that little message comes up in chat, you know, such and such as burnt to death or, you know, fell too far, whatever. Um, so you can listen for death uh, events as well. And yeah, it's really cool. So that's basically just the chat box just there. So that's a neat little thing. So I've just got mine, you know, replying with uh, hi and the person's name. Hi, Remorseless. Anytime I put anything in chat. Kind of cool. Now this is a block I've missed, the player detector. So basically you right click on the block, it fires off an event um, called player and also fires off in the, uh, as the first parameter, the, the name of the person who touched it. So let's just go edit startup. And we can see here, we're looking for an event. Don't actually need any of these parameters because they don't do anything. It's just, uh, an event and one parameter. And actually the event you're looking for is player. 
Nice. So whenever um, someone touches the block, it fires off a player event. So the event is going to be called player. And the parameter, the first parameter is going to be um, the player's name. Nice. So we're here, we're just printing off what the event was called, player, and the player's name. In my case, Remorseless. Uh, I hate that name. I'm going to change it one of these days when Microsoft lets us start changing um, our names. Anyway, look at that, player, Remorseless. Neat. So that's a great little block. Good for, you know, if you only want to let certain people through a door or deliver messages to certain people or something. I've missed that block. Now here's an interesting new one, the environment scanner. And what this block does is returns information about, um, well, the environment, as that would suggest. So if we just hit this lever, look at this. We get, um, is it raining? No. What uh, biome are we in? And we're on a beach biome. What's the temperature? Medium. And is it snowing? No, it's not. Very cool. Or is it snow? Yeah. Anyway, so that's actually quite cool. So we'll just take a quick look at that. Edit startup. And we can just see here, um, so that's a lever, just waiting for me to hit the lever. And here we can see, um, is it raining? So to get uh, if it's raining or not, env dot is raining will return true or false. Env dot get biome will return the biome name. Um, dot get temperature will return what the temperature is, high, medium, or low. And uh, dot is snow. Is this going to return if it's snowing or not? Very cool. <clears throat> so let's just uh, start that up again. And what I might do is actually demonstrate something you know, in, in Flux. We'll just go uh, toggle downfall. So we can see it said before, if it's raining, false. If we hit this again now, is it raining? True. So it actually works. Neat. So yeah, that's uh, the environment scanner. Our uh, last block I just want to go into. Now there is more stuff added than this, but this is an XP turtle. So you basically just craft a turtle with a crafting, uh, sorry, a enchantment table. Yeah. And we can see here at the moment, it's got no levels. It's got a little bit of XP, 11 units of XP. If I throw some bottles of enchanting at it, wow, that reached further than I thought it would. Bam, 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 bam. You can see all those experience orbs mostly disappearing. Um, all the ones nearby are disappearing. And if we click here now, we can see, look, we've got 12 levels of XP and 212, 219 units of XP stored. So this is collecting XP, so it can collect XP off, you know, mobs and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Let's just have a look at the program for that. And it works. Oh, look pretty much how they used to work. Um... On this one, I'm just going xp.setautocollect. Now, what setautocollect does is that every second or so, it's just going to suck up any XP near it. And since I haven't actually set that to false yet, even though the program's not running anymore, it's still doing that. So the turtle's just going to keep collecting XP until you tell it, you know, false, basically. Um, and then we've got, here we go, um, print the levels stored. So we're going to just go uh, over here. We'll see. So to get um, the stored levels is just dot get levels. Nice. Or um, the units of XP. So you know how you've got like levels and then, you know, on your XP bar, it gradually increases. So that's like units of XP is a gradual increase, you know. So, um, yeah, we can see how many levels and how many you know, units of XP we've got. You can also do some other things. Uh, how many levels did we actually have again? It was like 12 or something, wasn't it? Um, Another thing you can do is you can just hit, oh, you can also do just dot collect instead of doing that auto collect thing. And that will um, just uh, get you uh, whatever XP is nearby as a once off instead of just continuously picking up XP. What I want to grab here is this. And we're just going to go actually back into, we're going to go into Lua and we're going to say XP dot enchant and we'll say 10. And bam, look at that. We just enchanted this diamond pickaxe. So you can, yeah, basically use this to collect XP and enchant items. Very, very neat. All right, guys, well, look, there's a bunch of other stuff added by this mod. There's a lot more to come. Like I said, it's still in development. There's stuff to increase the range of red net and antennas and satellites and rockets. Very cool. Um, unfortunately, the rocket is crashing my game in this build at the moment. So, you know, bunch of extra turtles, shearing turtles, feeding turtles, um, yeah, uh, talking turtles, environmental, you know, 
turtles using the, the environmental thing as a uh, peripheral. Lots of neat stuff. It also adds villages, which can trade computer craft stuff. And look, lots of other neat features still to come. So guys, look, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'm very excited to have some of this stuff back. Uh, yeah, so... Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.